guys welcome to this video and this one I'm going to show you uh, one is the formula that that is the specifically designed for product led growth companies so this, this is the landing page formula uh, that is designed for high conversions which I'll show you in a second right basically it's very step by step and it can pretty much copy it into either an existing landing page or if you're starting from scratch even better because then you just have this guideline um, you know step by step right so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna first explain uh, the three pillars of what makes a really good landing page so then you will understand uh, why this works in the first place and why it was this designed uh, like this like e each section right so uh, basically the first thing that I need to address and basically you need to address all these otherwise it doesn't work that well is one you need to address the outcome right so what is the outcome of buying your products uh, right what is the tangible result that I'm getting by buying your product am i getting uh more sales am i getting better insights am i saving developer hours am i saving uh, x amount of time uh am i um i, I don't know be more productive in x y x y and z way right the more tangible it is the better because people are buying the result not buying the product right that's something that we need to to have in mind then is we need to they need to understand why is it better than what they're using now and what they're considering using right so by that I mean competitors because they always make this mental comparison in your head and it's your job to always win it right that's why this the, the, where the landing page comes in handy right so you kind of position yourself as the best solution out there um, so this cannot seem 10% better of what of what they're using now because otherwise you're not able to overcome that resistance of switching to another tool right for switching from something they are comfortable with to another tool which takes a lot of work and they only think it's 10 percent better so therefore there is not really worth it right because it takes a lot of work to get such a little result in their head even if that's not true right so you need to to like perceive value is like the the key here right and so essentially instead of seeming like 10 percent better you need to seem like a complete game changer in several areas of their business um so like five to ten 10x better than what they're using now or, or what they think of other competitors, right? And then finally is why is this risk-free, right? Because whenever s someone is signing up uh, to our products, even if they start off with uh, the trial or a freemium plan or whatever it might be, um, they always um, have a few questions in their head, right? That might prevent them from signing up. And this is huge, right? So they might have a few objections around how long does it take to learn? How, uh, will my team like to use this? How long will it take to take, uh, teach my team? Do I have to change anything in my process? Uh, does this comply with uh, GDPR or does this comply with any security concerns that I may have? Uh, will this product scale well? Does it have the documentation I need? Like literally a million things that they might be worried about and we need to figure out what are the main ones and address them on the landing page. Because this is just like a if you're going to use the product like growth model uh yes you're not do using sales as much but your website is now your sales uh, your sales guy right so if your sales guy doesn't answer any objections then he's never going to close the deal he's never going to get that sign up right so this is how that works uh essentially if you sell them on the outcome and why it's better than other tools but why it's not risk-free they're going to think this is amazing but i'll probably try it six months from now because now i don't have the time right if they think is really risk-free and better than other tools, but they don't think is going to get them the results, they're going to think it's a nice to have, right? And they're not going to sign up. If they think uh, there's going to make them more money or be, make them more productive or whatever the outcome is, and it's really easy to get started, but they don't think it's better than what they're using now, they're going to think this is really cool, but I already have a solution for this, right? So unless you hit it right in the middle, which various SaaS companies uh, do, um, you're always going to get these objections that prevent people from signing up, right? So in order for us to maximize conversions, we need to answer all these three at once, right? So that's what we want to do. Um, in terms, uh, now that we have that uh, out of the way and we like, fully understand that, I'm just going to cover uh, this page like section by section. So now you understand exactly, um, you know, how this works, right? So the first, the thing we need to have at the top is at the top of the page, we do not need to explain the entire product. We only need to show pretty much like the aha moments that you have in your product, right? So let's say you have a tool for SEO and the aha moment is when they 
see the reports and everything is really clear and is not really technical and is like very easy to understand and they can share with you the entire team or it's very actionable, right? So if that's the case, that's the stuff that you show at the top. So the thing that blows them away is the first thing they'll, they'll see, right? So the point of this is to not uh, have them sign up right away, but to just um, create the curiosity to either like 10, 20% of people or so to sign up right away because some people are like that. They, they just get that curious and want to sign up right away. And for the other 80%, let's say, uh, to create the curiosity to keep scrolling down and learn more about it, right? So what do you want to do is in case you're, you have a tool that is specific for one niche, so it's like a vertical solution, you want to say this was specifically designed for interior designers or designed for developers or designed for whoever, right? The more specific we make it, the more they feel like this was tailored for them and therefore it must be a better solution, right? Because people are kind of ego driven like that. Uh, then you want to have a really good headline. Usually this formula of getting results without a X problem works really well. I'll then show you examples in another video, but that will make uh, like uh, sense there. So basically what that means is um, they're going to get uh, the result that they really want without the problem they're facing all the time. So that's what really creates most of the curiosity. That and having like a GIF or a video on the side of the very thing that they get really excited about once they sign up to a free free plan, right? If you're product -led, uh, driven, uh, you'll probably have identified this aha moment before. And then um, in, in these three columns, what do you want to address? Uh, uh, by the way, you want to you ideally want to use the sign in with Google and stuff like that because it's just easier to sign up and that usually uh, converts a little bit better. Uh, there are a few exceptions where a Google, um, when your tool doesn't work directly with Google, uh, or they might want to sign up with a company email, uh, but but that's like a very specific case. Most of the times that tends to work really well. Um, then you want to address in these three columns the three main objections. So that might be, I don't know, GDPR compliance that they might be worried about or a unique USP that you have. Um, I don't know, maybe you're made designed for teams or whatever that is. You want to show it right from the top so people can see it uh, right away, right? Then you want to have, uh, you know, some social proof section where you can have the logos, which is really obvious. Um, is it, like a lot of companies use it, uh, use it. But if you want to take it one step further, you might want to use a quote from someone that got a really concrete results. So maybe they got more sales, they saved 20 hours a month, whatever that might be. Uh, and this result has to be the one that people care about the most, not a result that is like unrelated, otherwise it's not as powerful, right? Um, so that quote can really help, especially for someone that they know or is famous in the niche or is like a famous company in that niche. So people think if this company uses this tool, then it's likely that it's the, the best tool out there, right? That's the vibe. That's the goal that we want to create here. Then this is something that uh, a lot of companies um, like just don't show on their uh, landing page, which is ridiculous, right? So uh, if you think about a, a sales a sales process, right? If people don't don't really admit they have a problem, you're never gonna uh, have them buy or sign up because you're selling them on a problem they don't think they have, right? So what we want to do is we want to address the problem right away. So one, we remind them of the problem, uh, right? So we can easily position our tool as the perfect solution for those problems, and two, uh, we show that. Uh, like kind of, we, we kind of remind them that other tools don't, are, are not like the best ways of, uh, don't have like the best solution to fix it, right? So the way you want to do this is you want to say, okay, is this the way to uh, have a company wiki? Is this the way to record videos for your team? Is this the way to do async communication? Whatever that might be, whatever problem you're solving, you want to have something like that headline or stats, right? I have a client that's uh, that has a stat that says 80% of the time fixing bugs is just figuring out what that is, where the bug is in the first place, right? And that really makes people think that the part of the identifying the bug is the part that is the hardest and therefore their reports are the best way to fix it because they just have more data in their reports and their bug reports, right? So ideally you want to show these two things. One, what is the problem of what they're using now? Sometimes they're using a spreadsheet or something really simple. And what is the problem with other tools, right? Sometimes you can merge these. Sometimes you only have problems with other competitors in case your pro uh, market is more educated and they no longer use spreadsheets, S something around those lines. But so that's something we want to uh, 
address, right? Because if we not address this, then we're not going to really drill into their pain and we're not really going to position ourselves as the best tool, right? So what we want to do next is all the problems that we displayed here, we want to flip those around and show how your product fixes all of them and in order, right? So what I mean by this is having them think, okay, here's how I can get this result in, uh, you know, a, a time frame that sounds really short. So for example, here's how you can get, um, here's how, for example, for Loom, which I'll show you an example, here's how you can record uh, videos for asynchronous communication in a couple of minutes, right? Or say 10,000 words with a two minute video, right? Something around those lines that really makes people curious to keep scrolling down and learn more about how they, how they works, right? So the important thing with these sections is that they show the products because if you show like vague illustrations and stuff like that, that's really bad. Do not do that. Just show the products, kind of provide them a glimpse of the features they want the most, which you need to be aware of, of which those are uh, in the first place. Uh, then you want to ad either address a frequently asked question about that thing or a quote. So for example, let's say the first part is migrating uh, from another tool. And I'll show you examples of this in other videos, so this will make more sense. Um, let's say the this part is migrating to an, from another tool. And then you might say, uh, you, you, you might answer the frequently asked questions, which is, uh, does it, can I import from a CSV? Can, does it integrate with X, Y, and Z tools? All these things, you address them right away, right? You want to address those objections as we go. So when they move on to the next, they're fully sold on this part, right? And the way you have to explain it is you have to explain it like in three to five steps, let's say, is you want to explain it how it works and the sense of getting the results on, or on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis, right? So if you were to, uh, let's say if you were to create a, a company wiki, Right. The first thing that you might want to do is you might want to import the the current wiki you have from another tool. Right. Then the second thing you might do is you might you might want to invite your entire team. Right. And the next thing you might want to do is you might want to create categories, or you might want to have people collaborate with uh, within the tool, or you might want to uh, in integrate with other tools. So whenever you create a Google Doc that shows up in the company wiki. Right. So that's how you want to explain it in an order that makes sense. Uh, so it's kind of the order that they would set it up until they're like feel really successful and they're fully bought into the product, right? So then they know how all these features relate to each other because what most SaaS companies do is they just show different features that don't really seem connected and then people do not see the the benefits of having all of them in one place and how they work together and all that stuff. So they see the 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 benefits but not the underlying benefits the things that would really blow blow them away right so that's how you kind of do it uh then you want to address the main objection so this might be compliance uh switching over uh, the switching to another process migrating from another tool um you know setup time whatever that might be you want to address it right away or even there might be the support right because they may have experienced really bad support with other companies and you want to show um you know what your support is all about right so sometimes with some of my clients uh they have tools where the support team um they're actually in the development team as well so we show right away that the support they're getting is actually from developers so they can fix the issue as well right so that's way more ma valuable than the experience they had in the past, right? But they, where maybe it took four, 24 hours to answer and they were barely useful and it would took three days before they forward this to a developer where that could actually fix it, right? So that's kind of the what we want to show uh, there. Um, then we want to show like a quote and also uh, some visual proof, like whatever they built, uh, a use case or anything similar. So to give an example, a good example of this, um, is ConvertKit. So if you scroll down to their 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 um, social proof section, where they basically mean that this is the email marketing tool for creators, and then they show uh, you know this guy that is some sort of musician that is uh, collecting emails for his new uh, album, and he has this amount of volume in terms of subscribers, and this is their testimonial. So it didn't just give a testimonial in his face. He showed that is a guy like them. It has a certain audience that they want to have, and he's using it to promote their, his album. Same thing for authors, same thing for podcasters, and all these things. So people can truly relate to this, right? So this a good testimonials is driven, is like result-driven, and is someone that you can relate to. By seeing this, you can fully picture that this is that the person going through the website now can relate or even aspire to be 
the person that they're seeing here. Otherwise, it is like not really effective. This is how you make really good ones. And then lastly, you want to have a, a call to action at the end because they went through the entire page. You want to have a last little section uh, to make it easy to convert, right? So uh, you want to remind them that you, they're just two minutes away from shooting their next video or creating their new SEO reports or creating their company wiki or whatever that might be. And then you want, also want to address the objections again. So whenever uh, people think about having a commitment so or signing up to a tool or buying something, you want to remind them of why that commitment is risk-free, right? Maybe is that they can start with a free plan. Maybe it's that you do the setup for them. Maybe it's that switching over is really easy. Maybe it's, they, it's GDPR compliant, whatever it might be. You uh, share the top three. So then people think, okay, this is going to get me a really awesome results. It's much better than what I'm using now. It's going to be too quick to set up. And I'm probably two minutes away from just starting using it right away, right? So at that point, it's very, very hard to refuse, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know what you think about this page. And uh, yeah, I'll then show, record like a few other videos with examples. So then you can take action on this right away. Cheers.